All right, guys, it's been a while. It's been a while, but we are back and doing a Photoshop tutorial for you guys. This is an effect that I use all the time. Now, here's the thing. I've done a lot of Photoshop tutorials on this page. I've done a lot for a long time. You can go back into a lot of those old ones, and these days, the answer is just click the select tool button and then just click the AI button and it disappears or whatever. It's crazy how good Photoshop is these days. But there's certain things that you still can't do and today I'm gonna to show you something that is not only a great effect to learn, but doing this process will teach you to be better at Photoshop. You can't not learn something by going through this process because it's not a one button click solution. Now, if you're here and you're looking for the one button solution, hold up. I promise you, it won't be too hard. It's a video. You can always pause it and go back, commit to this because I think that you'll get a lot better just by following these instructions. We are learning how to do, hopefully you saw it in the thumbnail, grunge text. It's a five step process, but trust me, you're gonna wanna learn. You're gonna wanna see how it all works. All right, we are gonna go through this step by step. I've started with a completely blank canvas here. You can just follow these steps and you'll get the same effect, which is really cool. So to start off with, we're gonna make this effect on text. So I am just going to jump in here and just make something. It's gonna say, subscribe. Um, and then just because I I kind of can't help myself, I'm just gonna have a little play around with the spacing here. I like it to be nice and kind of tighter. This is just Helvetica bold, um, if you're interested at all. Um, so there we go. That's what we're gonna make into the grunge effect. Now, what we need to do first is just make this text into a smart object. If you wanna keep it as text, I do recommend you can use Control J just to make a copy of it. So you can just leave it there and then uh, you're gonna right click on it and you're gonna convert it to a smart object. So you can click on that. Now it's a smart object, which means when we apply filters, you'll be able to go back in and edit those filters again. And this is again, this is where we're gonna learn you're gonna learn a lot about Photoshop through doing this because you can play around with all these filters and get different variations of the same effect. So first thing you gotta do, make it into a smart object. Done. Next thing, you're gonna diffuse this object, which means you go up here to the filter, we're gonna use this button a lot, click on the filter, go down to stylize, diffuse. Now what diffusing does is it makes the edges, rather than the edges being sharp like they are, you can see that they go all jagged and crazy. That's step number one. Now already you've got a few options here. You've got dark only, light only, and anisotropic. I don't know what any of these things mean, but they get you different results. And you can see it here. If you have a look here, you can see how the edges are smooth. I like light and only because it's not as aggressive and we don't need that right now. But already you've got a little bit of that ink bleed kind of look. So we click on that. If I zoom in here, you can see we now have these kind of rough edges, which is really cool. We're, we're already getting somewhere with this. All right, so next up, we are going to add a ripple to the edge. We're gonna go filter, we're gonna to go to distort, and we're gonna go ripple. Now this is almost, a, this is a similar thing, but rather than kind of distorting it, it's actually gonna give it a little bit of a ripple. It's gonna give it a little bit of a wave. Now, once again, you can play around with this and you can uh, make this kind of as intense or not as intense as you like. I'd, again, I think subtlety is key here. I don't think you want anything crazy like this. I think you want it to just be a little bit of ripple, like this kind of thing. That's what I'm gonna go with. 45%. You can copy this exactly if you like, or you can play around with it yourself to get different results. So there we go. Now we have a ripple. As you can see, this is kind of like, I think I can, yeah, I can hide these. So ripple has done that. Diffuse has done that. So these these two things combined, it's you can see how it's shaping up already, which is really cool. All right, next thing we're gonna add here is a blur. And this looks pretty bad until you actually start playing with it a bit more. It doesn't get the same effect straight away as you might get with the other things. So once again, we're gonna go over here to filter. We're going to the blur and we're gonna add a Gaussian blur. And that is gonna make it look horrible for a second. So we're just gonna come back here a little bit. I, again, I'm gonna try and be a little bit subtle with this one, keep it like pretty tasteful, nothing too crazy. Um, I'll go four, I'm happy with this and I'll show you what it's gonna look like in a second. But this is where you're gonna get your main kind of like ink bleed kind of effect from. The more you kind of blur it, the more it's gonna blur the actual uh, the actual letters together as you go. So maybe I'll go a bit more. Maybe let's go like six and a half. And then you see how these are kind of touching? That's gonna mean something in a second. So you'll be able to see. So now we've got these three things on here. And like I said, because we made a smart object, you can actually click on any of these and you can go in and actually edit them again and make the changes 
if you want to keep going back and playing with it because you're not 100% happy how it turned out. So that's really cool. All right, now this is, I know, a slightly intimidating uh, thing to do, but you are going to add a displacement map to this. Now, the only thing about this is that you actually need to have a displacement map, which is, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, this kind of picture here, this is a displacement map. Anything that's kind of a black and white um, texture is a displacement map. And what it actually is, is it's an image that Photoshop is going to reference to then distort the thing that you're applying it to, if that makes sense. So it's gonna look at the subscribe here, it's gonna look at this, it's gonna see the blotchiness and it's actually gonna apply it to it. So a displacement map is just any kind of texture. It can be literally anything at all, like literally any photo. All you have to do is put it into Photoshop, save it as a PSD file, which is a Photoshop file, and then you can use it as a displacement map, which I'll show you right now. So we've got our blurred, rippled, diffused text here. Let's go to filter. Let's go to distort and now displace. Okay. Don't worry about these effects at all. You can leave them. I never touch these. I don't even know what they do. It doesn't matter. You click OK and now I've got a displacement map which is the one I just showed you. So it's a pretty subtle kind of black and white texture. I'm going to click on it and now you can see it has changed once again. I will um, hide it for a second so you can see. You can see it's added lots of kind of interesting effects. It's kind of added like a bit of a texture to it, a leathery texture to it. But it's also done things like in here, you can see it's taken a chunk out of here. It's spread the ink over here kind of thing. So we're getting somewhere now. It's really starting to look like something. And this is where everything all comes together. And you're also kind of ruining it at the same time. So I encourage you again to click Control J and make a copy of it. Just hide it. If you do that along the process, it means if you ever accidentally go too far, you can always go back. So all we're gonna do here is we're going to add a threshold, which is a, an adjustment layer, which is gonna adjust everything below it. So threshold is this one right here. So when you add a threshold to the layers down here, you'll get this little box here where you can adjust it and you can drag this around and this will actually uh, be your final result. So if you want it to be like super bleedy, Obviously, like you can't even read that, but that might be an effect you're looking for. Or you can bring it back a little bit, kind of, you know, bring it back to something more like that, you know? And that's it. That's literally it. It's done. You now have this kind of crazy ink bleed kind of effect. And you can turn all these things off. You can play with any of them. If you weren't happy with the displacement map, you can pick another one. Or if you just want a cleaner look, you can go back in, change the threshold again. This is going to be like, a cleaner kind of ink bleed. I can put the displacement map back on and change the blur and the blur, we can make it a little bit smaller and that's gonna change it again. So the main thing is, is that all of these effects that you've added here, you can play around with, you can change and the best way to learn on Photoshop is to try these things. Layer things on top of each other in different ways. Try doing things to the extreme one way and then extreme the other way and see what kind of effects you get because these are the best kind of effects on Photoshop, I believe, where it's not just a one button click. You're not just adding a filter that someone else has already made. This is you actually distorting something in your own way. And I think it's really cool. I think this is super unique and really special. So once you're done editing your text completely, export it just as an image or whatever you want it to be, and then bring it back in um, as a finished product. Because I don't know, Threshold just, does kind of weird, it interacts with other layers in a weird way. So I just avoid that by just going, this is finished, make another design and then just put it back on top as a new image. So there you go. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you guys learned something. Like I said, I know that this is a little bit intimidating, especially the displacement map, but all of these things are really good skills for you to learn. It's really cool to get dive a little bit deeper, see how things layer together. And I really encourage you to experiment with this and see what kind of results you get. Guys, if you liked it, subscribe. Why not? It's fun. There's loads of other Photoshop tutorials on my page if you want to check them out. Otherwise, if there's anything that you want to see, let me know. Put it in the comments. Guys, I've been around Photoshop for a while now. Here for you guys. Happy to make some stuff. If there's anything you want, let me know. If you've got any questions, chuck them in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Appreciate you guys.